Distance between skew lines. This is extremely important topic and I like your attention on this video. And we'll also discuss some concepts which will help you to answer similar questions. Question here is, show that the given set of lines are skew lines. And part B of this question is, determine the distance between the following set of lines. Lines given to us are L1, 103 plus S times 101 where s belongs to set of real numbers and line 2 is 107 plus t times 1 minus 1 0 where t belongs to r right so these are t and s are parameters for these given e equations of lines and we are given a point and their direction numbers right so first part which we have to show is that the lines are skew lines and then we need to find distance between the two lines right skew lines means the lines are not parallel but they are in parallel planes since the lines are in parallel planes they don't intersect so when we are trying to find distance between skew lines we are exactly finding distance between two planes right that is how we are going to approach this problem now how to show that the lines are skew lines so for skew lines you should remember that scalar triple product is not equal to zero so skew lines means what so when we are saying skew lines then we are saying scalar triple product is not equal to zero that means the skew lines the lines given are skew lines right now some of you may not understand the statement what is scalar triple product right so scalar triple product now i'll explain you that and by the way, I'll also uh, get the answer for the question. Now here, if you look at these two lines, we have two direction numbers given, right? So let me write that as M1 as the first direction number, which is 101. And then we have M2, which is equals to 1 minus 1, 0, right? These are the two direction numbers. Now if we cross them, though, then we get something which is perpendicular to both of them right so uh, let us say these two directions are on this page itself so so if these two lines let us say are on the page for example then if we cross them we'll get a normal vector which will be normal to the paper right now if I find just join these two points which are given on the given lines right and let's assume that they are coplanar they're the same plane in that case that line will lie on the paper and therefore the dot product with that line and the cross product of these two which is normal to this paper will form 90 degrees right and the dot product should be zero right so if they are in the same plane right then in that case dot product of the cross product of m m1 and m2 should be zero but if they are not in the same plane that means they are in parallel planes they don't intersect then that product is not equal to zero correct so we'll just try to figure out what is scalar triple product for the given situation right let's first find the cross product between m1 and m2 so m1 cross m2 is is what so m1 cross m2 will be 1 0 1 cross 1 minus 1 0 right now how to do this cross product so we have adopted in these set of videos one strategy and that is you start with the center number or and write it right in first right so we'll write this zero first we'll say zero and then write all of the numbers so zero one zero one so zero one one zero so we have got the first set of numbers right there so the idea is start from here and go clockwise and end also at that number now for this set of direction numbers we'll start with minus one and then go with 0 1 0 1 and end with minus 1 correct so we'll write our numbers like this and then when you write these numbers like this then you have to cross multiply so these sets will give you this is what you have to cross multiply you have to add these these are your three sets and from here you have to subtract these correct and as such what you will find always now what are these these are my coefficients for i j k so this is i this is j and this is k right so that is what they are so once i do that i get my cross product right 
So let me write down the cross product of this. So the i component here is 0 minus of minus 1. So we get m1 cross m2. Let me so let me write here or show it. I can write directly. I've taken a very simple example and as you'll see, uh, we'll get a very quick answer for this. So 0 is 0, right? Minus this. So minus 1 times 1 is 1. And so minus of that is just 1. So that is your i component. The j component is 1 minus 0, which is also 1, right? And the k component is 1 minus 0, right? So you again get 1. It couldn't have been simpler than that. So the problem has been designed so that I could quickly do it on the video and just show you the concept, right? You're not going to get that simple number. So remember how to do this and get your cross product. Now we got m1 cross m2. So that is m1 cross m2. Now let's do dot product of this with, with these two points, right? So let's call these two points as P and Q. So, so what is PQ for us? So what is PQ where P is this point? So we are trying to find PQ. PQ is this minus this, right? So 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. 7 minus 3 is 4. So PQ is 0, 0, 004, right? You understand what P and Q is? We are assuming point P to be 103. Let me write here now. Doesn't matter. P we are saying is 103 and Q for us is 107, right? So these are my points, P and Q, and I found PQ as 0, 0, 004. Now the idea is when we have PQ as a line and if dot product of this pq with the cross product of m1 cross m2 is zero then they are coplanar and if it is not zero then they are not coplanar right so that is what we'll find now so we'll do pq dot of we have already found m1 cross m2 right so we'll, we'll write this here m1 cross m2 right that is what we will find now correct so let me just draw a line here and separate these two things out. So what is PQ dot M1 cross M2? So PQ is 0, 0, 004 for us, right? We could have done all this in the same step also, but I'm just splitting them into different steps. Just to remind you, we got M1 cross M2 as this, right? And PQ is 0, 0, 004, which we'll use now here, correct? So PQ is 0, 0, 004, so we say 0, 0, 004 dot 1, 1, 1 right? 1, 1, 1, right? So when you do this dot product, you get 0 times this is 0. So you get what? You get 0 plus 0 times this is 0 and 4 times 1 is 4, correct? So you get answer as 4. So PQ dot M1 cross M2 is 4. You can see since it is not equal to 0, right? So we'll write this since since um, scalar triple product. So this is called scalar triple product. So, so let me just highlight this again, which is scalar. Since scalar triple product is not equal to zero, lines are skew, right? So lines are skew lines. Okay, so that is how we have shown that the lines are skew lines. So that is the first part which we have done now, right? That is show that the set of lines are skew lines. Now the question is to find the distance between the skew lines, right? Now why I did all this in this particular fashion so that I can use my formula and find the answer also very quickly. And the answer for skew lines is that we know this product which is dot product, right? So the distance of skew lines is basically equals to PQ dot M1 cross M2. We'll always take absolute value of this, right? Divided by the magnitude of M1 cross M2, right? Which is one square plus one square plus one square, right? Square root. And that gives us, we know, what is PQ dot M1 cross M2, which is four for us, and this is square root of 3. So the distance between these two lines is 
4 over square root 3. Right? So that is how you get the distance and that's the answer for this question. Now to explain how I got this formula, it's a good idea here to you know work on this and kind of explain this right so I may actually take up another video to explain the same concepts but here the the idea here is that what we actually have let me draw and use this little space to explain so let us say we have one line here in one plane right and the other line is in a different plane which is parallel to that right so we are saying this is my the other line which is in in the other plane but the two planes are parallel so when we say that the planes are parallel then we are basically saying that well we have this plane which is kind of like this right and the other plane for us is let me draw the other plane also so the other plane for us is kind of like this let's see now so these two are, we found, these two planes should be parallel since the lines are contained in planes which are parallel, right? So what we did is, when we did M1 cross M2, then we found a normal to these two, right? So M1 cross M2 will be a normal. So what I'll do is, I'll just draw a line which is normal to these two, right? So that is the line. So this line is normal to both, the, both these, right? Correct? So that becomes the normal. Now we were given two points. One is 1, 0, 3. Well, let us say this plane for us is pi 1. So let me just write this pi 1 here and this is plane pi 2. Correct? So on these planes we were given lines. So let us say that is a point on plane pi 2. Right? And let us say that we have another point on plane pi 1. So these points were given to us. Correct. So what we did was we actually found PQ dot of this. Now since these points are not on the same plane, the dot product was not zero, right? If these two lines would have been in the same plane, for example, if this line would have been here, for example, do you see that? And this point was here, correct? In that case, the line would be 90 degrees with the normal also. And so the dot product would have been zero. Do you get the point? If this line was on this plane as shown here, right, as this line, and this point was on this plane, then the line joining these two would be in plane pi 2, correct? And since this is the normal to both the planes, in that case, uh, this will be 90 degrees with this, correct? And so the dot product will be zero. Now, since they are not in the same place, dot product is not 0, it is 4. Do you see that? So, that is the dot product, correct? So, basically, we got the scalar projection of these two points. When I join these two points here, these are the two points, and when I do dot product with this cross product and magnitude divided by this magnitude, we got scalar projection of this line along this normal, and that is how we get the distance. I hope you understand the concept and that is how we get to do it, right? I'll ex explain you this concept in another video also, but that is exactly what we are trying to do. I hope that's absolutely clear to you. Thank you.